Hi there and welcome, it's Jennifer. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm going to show how to create some die cut felt ornaments. I am just over the top in love with creating these and I just can't get enough. I just wanted to show you ways that you can use some of the supplies that you may have on hand to create ornaments like this. Now I'm not an expert in sewing and such, so please keep that in mind as you watch this, but I wanted to show you that you could take some of your paper crafting items and use them to create handmade ornaments like these. I'll start by showing some ornaments that involve a little bit of stitching, and if you're good at stitching, you can skip ahead a little bit if you want to. And then I will show how to add foiling to felt if you'd like. And if you're looking for something super simple, I will also show how to do these ornaments without any stitching. And finally, I will walk through the things that you need for each of the ornaments I show. On all of these ornaments, I did use felt. I recommend getting a pretty good quality felt. You don't need the most expensive kind, but don't get the cheapest because those are really stiff and they're kind of see-through. So I will link to various felts that I found that I had success with. And you can check the prices, compare the prices, the sizes, and the quantity. Some of them seem expensive, but a ton come in the pack. So it really depends on how many you want to make. I also wanted to mention that for a lot of these ornaments, I'll be using some memory box dies that are intended just for this. They actually, the dies themselves, punch the little holes necessary to do the stitching. However, you don't need to use these dies. You can use any die you may have and just poke the holes yourself with your needle as you go around sewing. But these really make it easy if you plan to do a lot of these and they have all the little pieces you need. And I'll also show you how you can use this die from Reverse Confetti where it doesn't require any stitching. We'll talk about that later in the video. But let's first start with a little bit of stitching. Again, I'm going to use the memory box dies that create little holes for you, but you could also use whatever dies you have and just poke the holes yourself. So I am just cutting some white felt and I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. I wanted to show you that these dies are great and they cut through these felt with no problem. Again, I'm using a, like a medium quality felt. I'm not using like a 100% wool felt that's super soft and I'm not using the cheap stiff stuff. This is kind of in between and it works great. Since I plan to stuff this little snowman, I've cut two pieces and I will stitch them together and I'll stop the stitching halfway through to add some stuffing to the inside. Now the thread that I chose to use is what I happen to have on hand from my cross stitching days and this is some DMC floss, but you could use any string that you want. So I am just going to go through and go up and down through the holes. Now you'll notice that my stitches will skip because I'm going up and down. I'm not back stitching here, but that's okay. I'm going to go around once and then go around again. And that will make sure that there are stitches between all the holes. So you'll see I'm going up one hole, down the next, and just continue this all the way around. Now I will say that the memory box dies say that you should use fusible interfacing paper with the felt um, if you're gonna be doing this kind of stitching. However, I didn't have any, so I skipped it and I was fine, but you may wanna look into that if that seems like it would be helpful to you. Okay, so you can see my stitches are alternating there. Now I'm going to stop, I've kind of stitched around the head. I'm gonna stop and stuff some stuffing in here. Now you can buy what you need to stuff these kind of things, but I didn't, I didn't go to the craft store once again. So I am just stuffing it with cotton balls. I wouldn't say this is the best, but it worked great for what I needed and I didn't need to make a trip to the store. So I just kind of pulled the cotton apart so it's not in like these clumps and I just stuffed it into the head and now I'm gonna go ahead and do my stitching around the body also. And again, you could do a back stitch, but I find it easier to go and just go up and down every other hole. And this works really well and it's simple, so my son's been making a lot of these too. Okay, so now I'm almost finished here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop and stuff the body of the snowman also with a few torn up cotton balls. And once I have that filled, I can go ahead and finish the stitching to where I started. Now that I'm back to the beginning, I can go and do the stitches where there are gaps now. So now I'm just going up and down every other hole and you'll see that I have complete stitches all the way around once I've done this. The front and the back look the same when you do it this way and you get a really nice clean cut look. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around again and I'm gonna go ahead and tie this into a double knot and you'd be surprised how fast that stitching goes. Once I've tied this into double knot, I'm just gonna trim it. I'll be putting a scarf here so I'll be able to hide these tied ends. This snowman die set also comes with the dies to cut the scarf and the hat, so I stitched the hat on, and I've also stitched the main part of the scarf on. Now instead of stitching these two pieces that hang down from the scarf, I am going to adhere these on. And by the way, I cut a little fringe to the bottom of the scarf. I thought that'd be fun. 
Now I didn't have any felt or fabric adhesive, so I just used what I had on hand, which is Ranger Multimedium. It's a matte finish adhesive, and it worked fine for me. However, the felt adhesive is very inexpensive, so I went ahead and ordered some for future ornaments. And by the way, having that fine tip on my multimedia bottle is really helpful right here. But you'll notice that my daughter Lila pulled the cap off, that little plastic piece that you see sitting there. So I just keep putting the cap on, but it's no longer attached, but it still works fine. Okay, so now I've adhered those scarves on and you'd be surprised that dries very quickly. I also like to put a little tiny touch of this adhesive on any knots on the back, just so I can be sure they don't come undone. That way I can trim them really close and you won't even be able to see them. The die set also cuts a piece that you can stitch across his hat, but I was getting a little lazy at this point, so I'm just gluing a piece of glitter ribbon across it. You could also use ribbon for the scarf if you wanted to save time there and not do the stitching. The die set also cuts the little carrot nose, which I did from some felt, and it does eyes, but I decided to use some glitter enamel dots for the eyes, and I also added those with a little bit of this strong adhesive, and that worked great. I also found a bunch of old jingle bells in my craft room, so I'm using some gold string to go ahead and stitch through the hat, add a few of these little jingle bells, and then stitch it and tie it to the back. Then I use the ends of this string to create the hook or like the loop that you can use to hang this ornament on your tree. Now I'm going to be tying these onto some gifts to send to some kids, so I thought they would be fun to add those little jingle bells. Oh, and by the way, you could probably use a glue gun for a lot of these pieces if that's easier for you. You could really decorate these however you want. You could even use maybe an alphabet die to cut the person's initial to put on the front. I decided just to put a few buttons on his belly, so I'm using adhesive for those also. So you can see he turns out nice and fluffy, and you can see the back of the ornament looks really nice and clean also because we did that kind of stitching. There are other types of stitching you can also do. At the end of this video, I'll talk about the other stitched ornaments that I'm showing here and how I created those. But first, I wanted to show you how you can add foil to your felt if you want that added shine, like I have here for the cursive word joy. Okay, so I have cut a mitt from some felt. This is from a memory box die set. And then I have the Hero Arts Joy die that I'm going to put in foil onto the mitt. I'm using this Deco Foil product from ThermaWeb. It's hot melt adhesive and it's used to adhere foil onto fabric. In this pack comes some of the hot melt adhesive with the release paper back and some parchment paper. You wanna first put the parchment paper down onto your cutting plate, then take the hot melt adhesive, put the bumpy side down onto the parchment paper and the die on top of that. So you have the parchment paper, the hot melt adhesive, and then your die and run that through your machine like you would if you were die cutting cardstock. Then you remove the, the parchment paper and you have your hot melt adhesive here. And on that hot melt adhesive is a release paper. You wanna keep that connected. It'll stay stuck to the hot melt adhesive with no problem. So I'm going to use a craft knife to take that hot melt adhesive out of the die. It's just kind of stuck there. And I'm gonna position this onto my felt where I want it to stick. Now you could use an iron, according to the instructions, you could use an iron to adhere this to your um, felt. So you would just put parchment paper over this and then put an iron on it. And there's instructions on the package. However, since I have a mink machine, I thought this would be so much faster. So I'm taking this and putting it into a piece of the folded parchment that comes in the package. And I'm going to run this through my mink machine. Now, I didn't damage my mink machine doing this. I don't know if this is legal in the mink machine world to put felt through it, but my felt isn't all that thick. And I figured since other things can go through here just fine, I would give this a try and I had no problems. But you do this at your own risk, but I was able to do this on my mink machine and on my laminator with no problem. So this is just applying heat and pressure to it. Again, you could just have done this with an iron. I am just anti-iron. I'm just anti-iron. I just don't like ironing. So anyways, this has come through. I'm going to let this cool. You want to cool that completely. Then you can peel off the release paper and you'll see the hot melt adhesive is left behind on your felt. So now you're going to grab some foil. I like the ThermaWeb Deco Foil. It comes in a lot of beautiful colors. You could also use the Heidi Swap Mink Foil instead. Whichever you have is fine. Put it on top of that with the pretty side facing up. I'm doing silver here. Put it back into that parchment paper and run it through again. If you don't have the machine, you could again put heat on this with an iron and that will cause that foil to stick to that hot melt adhesive and you'll be left with gorgeous foil on your felt. 
Now, when I did this, I realized that I didn't put the foil over the dot on the J, so the dot didn't show up, but that's okay. I'm gonna put a little gem there, but you can see how beautiful that foil transferred onto the felt. You wanna make sure, by the way, it's cool before you pull, pull that foil off. Look how beautiful that is, it's really fun. Now you don't have to do the foil, you could do other techniques to add interest onto your felt, but I thought this was something fun to show. I wanted to show you another example, the intricate foil here on these felt wings. I'm using some dies from Memory Box. One cuts the solid wings, and I'm going to use that to cut from some white felt. The other die cuts like the intricate details of the wings that will go on top. So this is the solid wings I'm cutting from felt. Now here I'm putting parchment down, putting some of that hot melt adhesive bumpy side down, and doing the intricate wing die on top of that. And I'm going to cut this. So we're cutting the hot melt to do that intricate outlines that will go on top of our felt wings. Okay, so I'm peeling this off. Now I can take out the intricate piece of the hot melt, and I will put those on top of the felt pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and do this in the parchment paper so I can just go ahead and run it right through my mink machine. So I'm placing one here and I'll place the other there. Now again, I had no problems putting this through my mink machine. And again, this isn't the super thick, fluffy kind of felt. This is just kind of middle of the road. After that has cooled, I'm just gonna peel off the release paper, put it back into the folded parchment, put some silver foil pretty side up on top and run it through again. Again, you could just use an iron if you wanna be safe here or if you don't have these machines. After it is cool, I can remove the foil and you can see the intricate foil design on the felt. I think that's just beautiful. This was probably my favorite of the ornaments and Lila took off with it, so I think I need to make a few more. Now, if you aren't into stitching or you just don't like doing, I find it therapeutic, you can glue pieces together. So you can just dig into your die cut die collection and find what pieces you could glue together. Now, I made a bunch of ornaments with a die set from Reverse Confetti that is designed to create these layered snowflakes. And there's a bunch of variations you can make. Now you could, it has all the little dies that are necessary to create these fun layered snowflakes. You can cut them from paper or as I did here, felt, or you can use whatever you want. So I just used adhesive to adhere all these together. I used the multimedium again. However, you could use like a felt or fabric adhesive. And once I've layered a bunch of those on top of each other, I decided to add some fun sequins. I'm using some sequin packs from Lucy's Things. My friend Lucy has these great packs. They have a lot of variety in one pack. So I like that because I can use a few different sequins on one of these little ornaments. I also added with the same adhesive, some gems to the center of some of them, or you can use some stickles. I found that the stickles kind of go into the felt a little bit and don't stay as nice and fluffy, so I think it's actually better to use gems on this. So sequins and gems are a fun way to do little accents on these. Now to make them a little bit more sturdy, I just went ahead and die cut another shape and glued them together, and that really kind of finishes them off nicely. You could also add stitching to this if you wanted to. So here you can see how beautiful this looks, and this really didn't take that much time to put together. So from that one reverse confetti die set that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I was able to create all these different variations of the ornaments, and you can pick any colors you want. Now over on the reverse confetti website, they have this key that shows you different designs that you can create. So it really is a great way to get more out of the one product. Okay, so now I wanted to just show you each of the ornaments here and talk briefly about how I put them together, just so you could get a better idea if you wanted to create some yourself. Let's start with the mittens and the stocking. Now, I did not stuff any of these. I actually created these so that they're open in the top. So what I did is I took, say, the front of the stocking, I stitched the red heart and the white pieces all to it, then I stitched that to the back of the stocking, and I left the top open. So you can put a gift card in here or some, um, some candy sticks, whatever you want. For the stocking, I use the Memory Box Plush Holly Stocking Set. If you're good at drawing, you could just freehand your own stocking and stitch around the outside. I use this die for the heart. However, you could use a heart die and just do the stitching yourself. I also added some jingle bells to the center. This one you could stuff if you want to, but I like keeping the top open so that you can add a little gift inside. On all of them, I did a little loop on the top with some string, and that's a perfect way to hang it on the gift or a tree. Okay, so for the mittens, I had this die has a little snowflake stitch that you can put in the center. You can put it anywhere on any of the other shapes. And then I stitched that with some silver thread. I also added some holly to the top and added little berries too with some buttons. So it's a great way to use up some of my buttons. 
Then we have the mitten with the joy on it that we added with the foil. I also added some buttons and jingle bells to this. Again, I stitched everything to the front first. Then I stitched the front of the mitten to the back of the mitten, making sure to leave the top open so I can add things inside. These are extra special because you can put a gift inside. Okay, so now for the snowman, we showed you this snowman earlier. Now I did two other snowmen. One of them I stitched the word joy on. This is a word die from Winnie and Walter. There are not stitch holes in this, but I was able to stitch through it with no problem. You could put a mouse pad behind your needle just so you poke through easier if you wanted to. I stitched all these things to the front half of the snowman and then stitched that to the back half and did the stuffing with it. I really love that added word on there. You could do an initial if you wanted to. It's a great way to get more out of your word dies. Then on this one, I did some foiling with the die cut Mary word, also from Winnie and Walter. And I got a little lazy at the end and just tied some glitter ribbon around his neck for the scarf. Here's a mini snowman. This is another memory box die set. This one's really fast to put together, especially if you don't take the time to stuff it. The scarf is easy. You just wrap a piece of felt around and then fold another piece of felt over that and it creates what looks like a scarf. So this one's really fast to put together. So my nine-year-old son really liked this star ornament. And in fact, he started to make one in every color to put on our tree. I also die cut a smaller star from another die set that I have, added that to the front just for a little more interest. So I use this memory box one that pokes the holes for you. However, you can use a star die and do the stitching on your own if you didn't want to get the die. So think about any dies that you may have that you can create ornaments out of. But if you're going to make a bunch, these that actually poke the holes for you really save a lot of time and I decided to put a little gem in the center from Hero Arts there too so look at your embellishments and see what you can use to decorate these also Next we have the heart with the angel wings. So I stitched the two layers of the heart, the front and the back together and did some stuffing in there. And while I was stitching it, I held those angel wings on the side. So I stitched through the wings so they're sticking out from between the front and the back of the heart. Of the stitched ornaments, this is probably my favorite and I'll be making a lot more. Now I also have my reverse confetti snowflake uh, felt ornaments here. You can see the die set there in the back. What's fun about these is that one die set you can do all the different options and I wanted to show you the final results here. On some of them I put pearls, on some I put sequins, so you can change up whatever you do. And remember that any of the dies that I show here can be done with paper on cards. Even the ones with stitching, you can do some stitching on paper on your cards. So you don't have to use felt or fabric if you don't want to. Now, I've, as I've mentioned a few times, I plan to tie a lot of these onto gifts, but if you wanted to put it in a card, what you can do is stamp a greeting on a strip of vellum, wrap the vellum around the front of a card and hear it on the inside, and then tuck your ornament into that. And that'll hold it there enough that you can put it in the mail or put it in an envelope and send it to someone. So you can see here what that just kind of slips out and you have your little ornament, but it's also a part of a card. So there you have it, like a long video showing a quick look at a bunch of ornaments. Sorry about that, but I hope it inspires you to give this a try of making some ornaments out of your crafting supplies. If you're interested in the products I talk about, they're linked in my YouTube description, or you can click here at the top left to head over to my blog for a lot more information and a bunch of giveaways of the stuff that I talked about in this video. You can also subscribe by clicking the bottom and left button. And there are three more videos you might like there in the center, and all the links are also provided below. Thanks for sticking with me and I hope to see you soon.